Good morning, good morning. And all the people of God say amen. <clears throat> so you'd like to welcome you this Sunday morning to our morning worship service. Amen. We realize that God is good all the time and all the time God is good. So I know our friends and family that are watching with us there, our church member there, Brother George Goodman watching with us always, Trina, Evangelist Canada, amen, amen. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Amen. Christy, Katrina, how's everyone this morning? Amen. Another, another wonderful Sunday morning. We got a great message for you this morning. Michelle Conway, Callie D, Doretha. Amen. How's everyone this morning? Mother Adam A. Calhoun, Joe Lee Canada Jr. from Germany. How are you doing, little Joe? Leonard Conway with us this morning. Amen. Amen trying to find the home button on my computer. Amen. Brenda Dunlap, niece is with us this morning. How are you doing, niece? Amen. Amen. Good morning to everyone, to all our friends. Dot Don is with us this morning. How you doing, Dot? Amen. 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 We've been uh, doing the series, have been doing the series about the lost. A thing we lost. I think the last one we did, uh, Bob Hibbler was uh, Nebuchadnezzar. He lost his mind. And we're going to con continue our own, not with the loss, but we're gonna, that's in the book of Daniel. We're going to stay in the book of Daniel for a while. Amen. Chief Ditchman with us, him and Claire. How you doing this morning? Amen. <clears throat> While you send in your prayer request, Dale Reed, we're going to play some music that the Evangelist Canada has got. All right, run the hall. How you doing? Run the cop in the hall. The needs born and sugar. But if you knew Amen. how damaging some of these most popular coffee add-ins, like in a moment we're gonna get some music here. Let me get some technology ready. My wife had set it up. The only thing I had to do was press the button, and uh, the spirit fall down by Luther Bond. Amen. I think we're going to have some music this morning. Evelyn Woods watching with us. How you doing, Evelyn Woods? There we go. Luther Barnes, Spirit Fall Down. Miss Thaddeus, how you doing this morning? Amen. If God has blessed you this morning, chime in and tell us how he blessed you. Reverend Holloman with us this morning. Let's continue to lift him up. Kanisha with us this morning. Elk Williams, Pee Wee Williams from St. Louis with us this morning, Evelyn Williams. Morning to all our friends and family. Savannah Craigwood, we're praying for Savannah Craigwood. Amen. Melanie Shaw, loss of her mother. Amy Cheetah, my niece is watching with us this morning. Amen. Let's see what we got on our prayer list. Curtis Dean, Mother Curtis Dean Jones, Dr. Badger with us. Louise Burnett, got some pastors and preachers we need to pray for. Uh, JC, Pastor JC Smith. Pastor Barnes, our uh, greater Barnes, Governor Tate Reed, our national leaders, our local government, Scott Atkin family, still praying for the Canada family, the Bright family, Mary Stewart, Cleo Simpson, Conway Stanford Simpson family. In all the prayer requests, just type them in. Birthday shout out, um, Cookie Burnett had a birthday the other day, Clara Dishman, amen. Another announcement, the COVID, don't forget the census. We're still doing census, make sure you complete your census, stand up, be counted. Shirley Binder, amen, praying for Shirley Binder. 
Spirit falling down. And on the 31st, we have the uh, COVID-19 testing at the Robinsonville Rec. Amen. Drive through. Josephine Field, we're praying for Josephine Field. Amanda Franklin. Spirit fall fresh on us. Fall down. Earl Dennis with us this morning. Hey, cousin, how you doing? As you all know, we don't own the rights to any of this music. We're just playing it. Amen. To lift up our spirit. Spirit, fall down. Fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God. Josephine, okay, you listen with also glad, glad you're in there with this morning. How you doing this morning? Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for life, for health, and strength. So much to be thankful for. We realize that we just don't thank you enough. So we come this morning with head bowed down, but heart lifted up, say, Lord, have mercy. So much to be thankful for, and we just don't thank you enough. So come now, Lord God. You heard the members on the prayer list, and there are many, many more, Lord God. Those unspoken requests, just granted, dear Lord. Praying always mighty for the world leaders, this country and state and city, local future, that the thing they do be pleasing in our sight. Bless us and keep us. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Mary Mac Henry, how you doing this morning? <clears throat> Fall down. Mm -hmm. Fall down. Leroy Wolfer this morning. Amen. 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 The people of God said amen. Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. All right. Cut these sound devices off. Daniel chapter 5, uh, uh, we start reading there. All right, there we go, just technology. Okay, Daniel chapter 5. All right, 1 through 6, Brianna Willis with us. Amen. And down four through, well, we're looking at the whole fifth chapter of Daniel, but we're going to read verses uh, one through six, then down, picking up again at verse 24. Daniel 5, starting one. Our niece Sharon is with us all the way from Florida. Daniel 5, verses one through six, then starting again at 24. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lord and drank wine before them. All right, Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the gold and, and the silver vessel which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his prince, his wives, and concubines might drink therein. They brought the golden vessel was taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was in Jerusalem. The king, his princess, his wives, his concubines drank them. They drank wine and praised the God of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. In the same hour came forth the finger of a man's hand 
and wrote over against the candlestick on the plaster of the wall of the king palace. And the king saw part of the hand that wrote. The king continent was chained. His thought troubled him so that the junk of his lounge were loose. His knees smoked one against another. His knees not. 24. Then was the part of the hand sent from him and this writing was written. This is the writing that was written, meaning, meaning, take care you fasten. This is the interpretation of the thing, meaning, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Take care thou are weighed in the balance of found warning. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Parisians. The, then commanded Belteshazzar, they clothed Daniel with scarlet, put a chain of gold about his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him that he would be the third ruler in the kingdom. And that night was Belteshazzar, the king of Chaldean, slay him. Amen. I see Lois Whalen has joined us. Amen. Just for a while, uh, uh, this morning, we're going to preach a classic, the handwriting on the wall. The handwriting on the wall. Amen. Now, when Nebuchadnezzar had brought Daniels and the three Hebrew boys and the other uh, uh, Jews from Judea and Jerusalem, all right, they, they changed their name. All right, and they were given Babylonian name. Daniel name mean God is my judge. <clears throat> His name was changed to Belteshazzar, uh, protected by Baal, all right, which uh, uh, Baal, the pagan god of the Babylonians, Sharon Hodges. So these were given, we'll deal with the three Hebrew boys later, but Daniel was given the name Belteshazzar, which means Baal is his protector. And Baal was one of the pagan gods of Babylonian. Now, the purpose of changing the young men's name was to help erase their attachment to their religion, to their nation, and to their God. The purpose of changing their name was to help erase their attachment to their religion, their nation, and to their God. Satan is trying to erase our attachment to our God, our heritage, all right, by our name that are not pleasing to God. All right, now, what do you mean by name that are not pleasing to God? When I was in working in Job Corps, had a young lady there, her name was Tanik Ray, spelled Tango Ray. And I told her when that, let me guess, your daddy liked gin. She said, how you know? Well, he named you Jen. All right, and that cannot be pleasing to God. So think about it, what we are naming our children because our name gives the insight to our character. Daniel meaning God is my judge. And God certainly shall be all of our judge. So Satan is trying to detach us, if you will, from our God our heritage, and our calling. But a uh, Second Peter 2 and 9 tells us, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praise of him, him who has called you out, called you out of darkness into the marvelous night. Now the handwriting is on the wall. Satan is trying to uh, detach us from our God, from our religion, and our service of him. What does this mean, the handwriting on the wall? It means it's a very apparent sign that something bad will happen in the future. It's a clear warning that something bad is about to happen. Now, America, the handwriting is on the wall, and we cannot see it unless we change our evil and our wicked ways, then we will suffer the fate 
of all other have gone before us. Morning, Benny Patterson. All right. The writing's on the wall. But we, Janet D., like so many, like Belshazzar, Anthony, we could not read it and we cannot understand it. The signs are there for anyone to see. Good friend Chester with her this morning. Now, this expression, the handwriting's on the wall, warning of imminent danger, come from Daniel chapter 5. Now, let's look at the story that transpired in Daniel chapter 5 that led to the handwriting being on the wall. Now, verse 1, look at the ball or the banquet. The ball. Belshazzar. All right. Mean God save the king, the God protect the king, something like that. All right. Uh, the Babylonian king had a ball, a banquet, and invited a thousand of his, of his officers. All right. To a, a great, great feast. Simply had a big party. All right. And they were partying. A lot of people there, over a thousand of his officers. And, and they were partying. And in verse 2 to 4, tell us that Belshazzar the king had tasted the wine. Simply put, he was a little tipsy under the influence, or if you will, drunk. Pastor Cleveland, how you doing this morning watching with us? All right. All right, the, the king tasted the wine and he was drunk. Coming out of Daniel chapter 5, all right. All right, the order. He gave the order after he tasted wine under the influence, tips the drunk, that they that the vessels, the sacred vessel, the temple vessel, cups, be brought that Nebuchadnezzar had brought from Jerusalem, be brought unto his feast. So he gave the order, and this was the outrage that the king and his guests, all the wives, all the officers drank wine from the vessels of God. They had profaned the holy vessel. They had turned them from sacred to secular. And that's so many of us this day in life. We changing things from sacred to secular. Changing thing that instead of us adopting the world, adopting our ways, uh, Russell Moore, we are adopting the ways of the world, bringing everything into the church when we should be taking the church into the world. All right. So they've been partying, love, drinking wine, and feeling good. And the king had the goal. The nerve, the gall to order the sacred temple vessel. All right. And he drunk wine, profaning the holy thing of God. When all of a sudden, at this ball, when the king displayed his gall, God wrote on the wall. The hand wrote on the wall over on the plaster of the wall by the light of the candlestick. And the message was on the wall. And the horror, yeah, the hand wrote on the wall and the horror came to the king's face. It tells us that his continent changed. His face changed. He became pale, all right, as if he had seen a ghost. It, 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 the, the writing on the wall and the hand image so troubled him. So troubled him <laughs> that his hip joint loose. His knees began to knock and the blood drained from his face. He acted as if he had seen a ghost. That was the writing on the wall. And we ought to take the cue from King Belteshazzar. The writing is on the wall but it don't seem to bother us. We like the king. We can't read it. We don't understand it. And we pay no attention to it. 
Lena Bard, how you doing? Just like the king was under the influence, we also are under the influence of the world. Instead of the world being under the influence of God's word, Renita. All right. So at the ball, the king had the gall to call for the sacred thing. All right. And made them secular. Then the handwriting went on the wall. God is still writing on the wall. The same thing that he wrote way back then, he's still on the wall. We'll tell you what that means in a moment. All right, then the king, Belshazzar, gave a call. He called for the mag magician. He called for the soothsayer. He called for the seal and promised them a great reward to anyone that could interpret the mysterious writing. But no one was able to do it. And they were trying to figure out what it mean. <clears throat> then the queen mother heard all the racket, heard all the fest, heard all the noise in the banquet hall. Y'all realize that when we get under the influence of wine, we can make up a whole lot of noise. They were making up so much noise, but... They didn't know what was going on. The queen mother came in to see what was going on. And the, she saw the writing and the king still scared. And the queen mother made a recommendation. She remembered, now she was an old, old mother. All right. And she advised the king to call on Daniel. She remembered that Daniel had interpreted the dream of Bethesda, thy grandfather, never to never. She called him man of God that's able to interpret your dream. And she was right in that aspect. God sent his people in this world to help us along the way. All right. If you don't understand what you're reading, you better ask somebody. <coughs> You remember the Ethiopian eunuch that was on his way back home to Queen Candace, sitting there reading his Bible, and Philip asking, understand him what thou readest. He said, how can I let somebody interpret it for me? All right, so we better get somebody to help us understand what's written on the wall. Better call on the man and woman of God. The king promised to promote Daniel to the third position in the kingdom if he would interpret the writing for him. Daniel refused. All right, the king promised him the third position. All right, he was king of the city. His father was king of the whole Babylonian empire. And that's what would make Daniel the third person. Daniel told him, you keep your honor, you keep your purple robe, you keep your gold chain. I will interpret the, the, the message for nothing. Because God gave it to me, and I give it to you. All right? Daniel began to interpret the, 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 the message, the handwriting on the wall. And you see that reminds us. Not only must we be able to see the writing on the wall, we got to understand what it really said to us. Daniel rebuked the king. All right? <laughs> yeah, Daniel rebuked the king. As the men and women of God should rebuke our leaders that are doing wrong. Nathan rebuked uh, uh, David. Daniel rebuked Nebuchadnezzar. He rebuked his grandson. So pastor, preacher, when our leaders are going wrong, we have an obligation and a duty, Tina, to rebuke them. He compared his ruling, his kingdom, 
to that of his grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar. He said, now you remember the lesson that Nebuchadnezzar learned when he didn't give God the, the glory and the credit. All right. He lost his mind. Trina said she rebuked, rebuked Trump. All right. He lost his mind and went insane. This was the lesson that Nebuchadnezzar had learned. But you, O king, this is the lesson that you have spurned, that you have shunned. You won't give God the glory. Instead, you're taking those things that are, sec or that are sacred and making them secular. All right? What Daniel will tell him, you know the history. You know what happened to your grandfather, how God made him and caused him to lose his mind. And afterward, he, he gave worship and testified to God's sovereignty, being humbled by God. He said, you know what happened to your grandfather, all right? And something bad is going to happen to you because the handwriting is on the wall. We better wake up America. We better wake up old sinner and see the handwriting on the wall. Something bad is going to happen to us if we don't wake up and read the writing on the wall. All right, he told him, keep your reward. I'm going to tell you what the writing means. He went ahead and rebuked the king. Then he went ahead and explained the writing, the interpretation of the writing. And this is what he, he told the king. The writing means this, numbered, weighed, and divided. Meaning, all right, mean number, which means <coughs> your days of your kingdom are numbered. They're going to come to an end, all right? Our days down here are numbered. Don't think. We're going to land forever. The writing is on the wall. God had numbered his, the day of his kingdom and finished it. If we're not careful, God has already numbered our days. And if we don't straighten up, he's going to finish it for us. Meaning, me number. All right. And then, take care mean way he told the king you have been weighed in the balance all right you have been weighed by the scale and you have came up lacking god what will god find when he weigh us in the scale you see scale symbolize justice we see the picture of justice which is a blind woman holding the scale. Marcia, how you doing? The blind woman holding the scale, which means justice is blind. Well, justice might be blind, but God is not blind. That means justice should apply to everyone, individual. For if you do the time, do the crime, you should pay the crime. You do the crime, you should pay the time. And God had number his day, and he weighed him in the balance. What will God find when he weigh us in the scale? He gonna find that we come up short, that we come up lacking, that we come up light, that we don't measure up to what we should be. Then that because we gone away from God's word. And finally, he told him, Perez, Upasin. All right. Your kingdom has been that divided and given to the poor and to the me. God will take it away from you. You may think you, a preacher bird, how you doing? That you're all that and a bag of chips. I'm here to tell you, God will take it away from you. Mr. President, Mr. King, Miss Queen, Mr. Potentate, Miss Chancellor, 
you better straighten up, brother prime minister, and do right according to God's will, according to God's way. Though when he weigh you in the balance, if he find you up lacking, he going to take it away and give it to someone that will follow his word. You can't keep going against the will of God and thinking that it's all right with him. Then the king tried to bribe something. Daniel had told him, your kingdom is finished. Then he ordered the robe, the purple robe, symbol of kingship, to be placed on Daniel. He put a gold chain around his neck and made him the third ruler of the kingdom. I'm here to tell you, when you do God's will, he will promote you. He will move you up. He will uh, 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 lift you up higher and higher. All we got to do is just lifting up. I like what Job said. The Lord give it and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You see, there was a great fall that very night. There is the king of me entered in the Babylon and, 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 and took the kingdom and killed the king. You see, while the, the army was approaching, while the danger was approaching, the king was having a party. And the king, when he got under the influence, all right, when he got all drunk and under the influence, he could not see. And we cannot see that we are under the influence. Yeah, when we get under the influence, we do crazy things. We're under the influence of Satan doing his bidding. We, we try to play it all, talking about the devil made me do it. Yes, if you're under his influence, he will make you do lots of things. All right? We're under the influence of the world. And t instead of taking the sacred thing into the world, we brought the secular thing into the church. We're under the influence of alcohol under the influence of drugs, under the influence of men, under the influence of the of, of women, and the handwriting is on the wall, but we cannot see the handwriting. We don't understand the handwriting. We don't want to know about the handwriting. And when you start telling them, about how good God is. They tell you, I don't have time for that preacher mess. I don't have time to hear that. What they telling you, I ain't got time for God. Well, you better make time for God because we made time for you. We've been weighed in the balance. We've been weighed in the scale and we came up lacking. We came up short. We didn't measure up to the God's word. We went contrary to his will. And finally, God wrote it on the wall. Intimate danger is coming. Something bad is going to happen in the future. We just don't know how long. God is giving us time to get it right. But he won't give us forever, mother cat. We heard about the goodness of God, but there is a wrath of God, and the wrath of God is coming, meaning our days are numbered, and it said twice, meaning, meaning to make sure that we understand that it's going to happen. Take care. We've been weighed in the balance. The balance is the word of God. We are sinners, and we come up short a parade we our kingdom is gone is divided god is going to take it away from us and give it to to someone 
that can use it. Wait a minute, Doc. What he going to take from us? He going to take from us our eternal salvation. He going to take from us our soul that we forfeited and give it to the devil. And we're going to bust hell wide open. But we can stop that from happening. We can stop God's wrath by humbling ourselves and submitting unto his word. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from the wicked way, then will I heal from heaven. I will heal their land. I will be their God and they will be my people. He sent his son, Jesus the Christ, down to 40 and two generations. He made the lame to walk, made the dumb to talk, and they sent him to a hill called Calvary. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head and he died for your sin. He died for my sin. They put him in a grave. The grave couldn't hold him. Because early, early, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Went on to catch the cloudy escalator and went on home. But one day, he's coming back for history without spot or without rancor. And we're going home to forever be with the Lord. The handwriting is on the wall. America as a country, as a nation. And we as individuals, we had better read and understand that danger is in our future. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Daughter the people. The handwriting on the wall, but God appears. Put your hands again. God people, the handwriting is on the wall. He's coming back for his tree. You need somebody to explain it. Ask the pastor preacher. Invitation extended. We offer you Christ. Say it, Daddy. Handwriting. Say it again. We offer you Jesus. Give your heart to God and your hand to the man or woman of God. Protect me, any of these pastor preachers on the line, or any church member. We'll get you where you need to go. You care more about your soul salvation than what church you attend to. Come on, Donna. The handwriting is on the wall. Trouble in the mind. Turn white as White as snow. Many of us got trouble in the mind. We need somebody to read it. Read the word and explain the word. Tell you what it said. The handwriting is on the wall. Oh, yeah. So when they did what God said, don't do that writing came on the wall. Oh, yeah. Couldn't nobody read it. Go but ahead, preach, Doc. Go get Daniel, somebody say. Go get Daniel, somebody said. That was the queen mother. Go get Daniel. Couldn't nobody read Daniel, somebody say. Somebody read it. Somebody read it. You better read the book. Read the word of God, not just read it, do it. Tell me what it says. Take it on home. Handwriting is on the wall, church. 
Better get right church, let's go home. The right is on the wall. Somebody read it. Somebody read Tell me what it said. Go get Daniel. Go get the man of God. Go get the woman of God. Don't forget our announcement about the census and about the COVID-19 testing at the end of this month. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for life, for health, and strength. So much to be thankful for. We realize that we just don't thank you enough. So we lift you up. We praise you and magnify your name. Truly, Lord, your writing is on the wall. We need to go get Daniel, the man and woman of God, to read it and tell it what it said. It said, repent now for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest ruler by me, of now henceforth and forevermore. And the people of God said, amen. Please, ma'am, please, sir, share that with your neighbor, share that with your friend, share that with your family, share that with your network. Amen. We'll see you uh, a win through another great message from the Lord. Remember, the handwriting is on the wall.